In this video, we are going to do a VR performance test in EL2 Sturmovik. Again, I do like to make these videos as I tend to search for them myself pretty often, but they are just not enough. Now, I am not a professional benchmarker, if that is even a thing, but I would just like to share my settings and performance with you for both the Meta Quest 2 and the HP Reverb. Let's first take a look at the computer specs. I run EL2 Sturmovik on a 3080 Ti, i9-9900K processor and 32GB of RAM. Let's first take a look at the Quest 2 settings on 72Hz and a render resolution of 1. Now let's quickly take a look at the game settings. I will call this settings 1 that we are going to test first. Most importantly, shadow quality has a big impact on performance but also on how the game looks like. We are going to test it on high first. Just take a look at it, pause it if you want. These are settings that work pretty well for me. And here we are in game approaching a single target. Don't look at the average FPS as that is just constantly changing because I'm in the main menu and it's loading blah blah blah. We look at the FPS right now, it's a stable 72, that's what I love. The graphics look absolutely great. And we keep being at 72 even if we get closer to the target here. And here we are just lighting the target up. Sometimes it gives a small dip, but that's really not noticeable in the headset itself. Now if we fly closer to the ground, it keeps at 72 FPS with sometimes a spike in FPS. But overall, I'm pretty happy with these settings and performance. And here we go into a dogfight. And of course, it has to load more things right now. The GPU frame time is a bit higher here. But it keeps at 72 FPS and it doesn't go into a projection mode, which I'm pretty happy about. And let's test now the exact same settings on the HP Reverb with a super sampling of 100%. But the headset has a refresh rate of 90Hz, so you want to keep having that 90Hz. As you can see, uh, approaching the single target here, it kind of keeps at 90 uh, FPS all the time. We get a little bit closer, it, it lights up and it, and it gives a little bit of a dip, but not really noticeable in the game. Here, as we go into the dogfight, it has to load a lot of things again and then it dips and dips. But once it's settled, it goes back to that 90 FPS and it keeps stable at that refresh rate. Pretty happy with it. Let's go over settings number two. What I have changed is the shadow quality to low and the clouds quality to low. What I have also changed is setting the render resolution in the Quest 2 device settings to 1.3 to see if we can still maintain that 72 FPS on the Meta Quest 2. Now what you can see even approaching a single target here is that the GPU frame time is much higher than when I put the render resolution scale on 1.0. So if we are playing with a render resolution of 1.3, clearly the uh, the graphics card has more problems with that. But that's also due to the game just being outdated when it comes to the engine. Of course, here as well in the dogfight, much higher frame times due to the uh, 1.3 render scale. It makes everything much clearer, of course, and that's just asking more from the computer. But playing on a render scale of 1.0 is kind of clear enough for me. So it's just, uh, it's what you, it, it's up to your liking, to be honest. Now, where the game really shines compared to DCS is that in multiplayer, it also runs pretty good. We are now playing on the HP Reverb here, and we are on the ground with other players. And it kind of keeps at 90 FPS. It is fantastic. It's really fantastic that it can run multiplayer and it runs good. And this is a server with like 80 players right now. In DCS, there are so many stutters in multiplayer. It's pretty much unplayable. Now that was it for this video. Keep in mind though that on every single system, it runs differently. Also remember that the game is based on a somewhat dated engine and it struggles to maintain 90 FPS in the HP Reverb even on high-end gaming rigs and that also counts for the uh, meta quest too you always have to figure it out yourself what works best for you but i can tell you yes it runs perfectly fine to play in vr and what's best and i told you just before is that it runs also pretty well in multiplayer compared to dcs so if you are a world war ii freak and you like flying sims this is definitely a game that you would like to play in VR, especially in multiplayer. I hope you liked this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to keep up to date with the latest PC VR updates. I hope to see you all in the next video.
Tchau, tchau.